My name is Rebecca, I'm with Uncorked Canvas, and I'm going to walk you through the funky tree painting today. So we're gonna get started with just the background and it's gonna begin with some beautiful colors, some warm yellows and oranges, and then we'll get all of the background sky, the blues, the greens, and all the fun colors filled in. So if you don't have a kit um, purchased from Uncorked Canvas, which you can get at any time in this video, of course, will be available at any time after that with all these steps and everything that you need to paint this, but if you don't have a kit, um, what I'm gonna be using today, I'll walk you through, I'll fit, switch the camera to uh, desk view. Um, so what I have for my colors, are white of course and then i've got a burnt and sienna i've got a phthalo blue i've got what's called a chrome yellow or a cadmium or hansa yellow and then i have a chrome orange that i'll be using for all of my colors today i've got my canvas just laying flat in front of me if you've got an easel or anything like that you can put it up on that um, and then i've got paper towels i've got three paint brushes the largest one i'll use for the whole background and then i've got a smaller one and then a detail brush and then I've got, of course, a dirty cup of water here, perfect for cleaning out brushes. So to begin with, we're going to start, if you have the reference photo in front of you, um, it's good to keep that handy, but if you wanna just follow around um, with my steps, then I will talk you through everything and we'll get started with our largest brush to fill in the background. So I'm gonna get that wet first by dipping in my water cup and gently flexing at the bottom. And like I mentioned already, we're gonna start with our yellows. So with all of these colors, have fun, feel free to mix something completely different. Um, but these are generally some good colors that mix well with each other, but you can of course deviate, make it a whole rainbow, do whatever you want to with any of your colors and it'll be beautiful. It's just gonna be a background, some kind of sandy dunes down here. And so the background can be anything that you want it to be and then we'll just put a pretty tree on top of that. So it can really be whatever you want to. So what I'm gonna start with is a, kind of a buttery yellow up at the top here, but because I wanna space it out and know where the orange and everything is gonna transition down, first I'm gonna take that color and just sketch out roughly and approximately where the hills are gonna go. And then I'll start up here and start to come downward. So we'll mix the color first though, just to have it. And what I'll do is I'll pull out some of my white just kind of scoop up what you can, put it near my yellow pile. And then I wanna slowly, slowly, slowly pull in little bits of my yellow um, so that I can just really control how much gets added. So I'm gonna just gonna tiny bits at a time, pull from the edge of that pile of yellow and add teensy, teensy amounts. So this is gonna turn it into like a butter yellow all by itself. I'm gonna flip the paintbrush to make sure that all sides of that white and yellow are getting mixed in evenly. But again, it's gonna get you to kind of a butter yellow. So what I wanna do is kind of warm it up a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to my orange, take the corner of my brush and grab just a tiny bit of it and stir that in. And that's gonna warm up the yellow and just make it, again, just a little bit warmer, less just vibrant, a little, little bit, make it a little bit more neutral. So you can start with whatever color you want. We're gonna do a couple layers to this yellow. So it's fine if this first color is just a little bit guesswork, you can decide and you wanna change something and you can do another layer on top later on. So we're gonna start with this. It's pretty pale, but we're gonna darken it up really quickly. This is just the first color that we'll do. And we're just gonna sketch with it just real quick. And these are gonna be approximate um, shapes. These don't have to be exact. So I'm going to go in about three fingers up on the left hand side. Again, these are just sketches. These are, these are just gonna be approximations and then we'll paint over them later. So just gonna give us a good starting point. So three fingers over here and about four or five fingers over here on the right hand side. And we're going to, from this point, come over about two fingers. That's gonna be the peak of this hill. I'm gonna go in and slightly bump up from that point on the side. And then about two thirds way across the canvas, I want to bring it downwards to the bottom of the canvas. And then, so again, that's about a third of the way across. I'm going to kind of bring it down more or less. We'll change that up when we actually fill in the hills. On the right hand side, I'm going to bring it in about maybe four fingers. That'll be the peak of that one. So about from there, I'm just gonna start slanting it upwards immediately. And then I'm going to bring it about two thirds of the way across the canvas and have it intersect with that one. And that's just gonna be our rough approximation for those hills. Don't forget if I'm ever a step or two ahead of you guys, just pause the video. Don't worry about trying to paint along with me. Just know that the reason we're doing this in video is so that you can pause and pace yourself at home. So take your time um, and I will just keep painting. I'll probably blow dry as well as we're going. So just a reminder, I'll be painting faster than you have to be painting. Use that pause and rewind button as much as you need. All right, so I'm gonna start with this color again. This is the palest color for my sky. And very quickly, I'm gonna start 
pulling more pigment into this as I transition down in the sky. Now keep in mind, your colors will blend the best while they are wet. So I'm gonna do this quickly. So if you're pausing, try not to pause for too long to make things perfect. Keep playing the portion of blending so you know exactly what to step into right away when you're ready for it. So I'm gonna dip my brush in my water, just make sure that it's not, hasn't dried out since I've had it out of the water for a little while. It's gonna help the paint spread as well. I'm gonna measure about a third of the way down the canvas and that's about where I'll start this. So I'm gonna start with long brush strokes that quickly fill a whole stripe of my canvas. And I want it to not just be a straight line when we come back to it later, so I'm just gonna push some of that color and make that line uneven up towards the top, kind of feather it out. And then I'm gonna take it down just a little little tiny way down the canvas. Again, I started this about a third of the way down. And I'm going to mix into the same color by pulling more yellow, more yellow and more orange. And just a little bit, don't forget, just a little bit of these colors will tint it very quickly. So just add little tiny bits. You wanna go a couple shades darker and don't forget to flip your brush to make sure that that is getting distributed on either side. You don't get a surprise color later. So I did yellow and orange. And to blend this, what you wanna do is start underneath your color, like so. And then I'm doing soft, short, choppy brush strokes up into the yellow. And by not putting a lot of pressure on your brush, you allow the paint to get softly feathered into the paint that was there before without kind of scooping it up or gouging that color. So that allows them to blend while they're still wet. Just try not to lift too much of that paint by putting a lot of pressure on it. Now I'm intentionally trying not to blend these together really smoothly. I'm trying to do short choppy brush strokes and I'm also trying not to make just a stripe of transition color going across. I'm going in and, and almost doing a kind of a wave pattern with short, just short brush strokes. And that's gonna kind of just push that in there without making it look cloudy or something like that. It's just going to give texture, just pretty much a straight texture. So just, just quick little, little brush strokes and it's starting to dry out a little bit. So I wanna get to the next color down. So we're using acrylic paints today. They're very, very fast drying. And that's why we're using them, but we want to take advantage of that, but we also want to be wary of the fact that they will dry quickly. And we can always do a second layer, but as soon as you're trying to push paint into paint that is drying, things are going to start getting gouged, things are going to start getting uneven. So just know that even if this one gets a little janky, we can work with the second layer as well. And the second layer always just looks a little bit more polished. So you can always count on that if you're not feeling it. So more yellow, more orange, and that's just gonna be the name of the game, which means we're gonna get less and less white as we get down to those hills. And it's just gonna be the same step as we go downward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start underneath that, and then I'm gonna continue those just light touch. I've heard people describe it as kind of kissing the canvas, light touch, short brush strokes, and you'll get that texture in the sky without it just being too stripey. So I'm gonna change the direction of my brush strokes every once in a while and just keep pushing those colors up into each other. You can even do like some swirling, some circles, some cross hatching, just if you decide that there's a texture that you accidentally or on purpose created and you really wanna stick with it, stick with it. This is your background, your sky. Do whatever makes you happy. I'm just really trying to battle my tendency to wanna make everything look stripey and kind of, or not stripey, but just smoothly transition. So I'll even just go back up with some orange and rough up some area that just look a little too precise. And while it's still a little tacky, you can do this. So that's why we work quickly. So we just have a little bit more play time without having to worry about the paint. All right, and then more yellow, more orange. And you can get as dark as you want to. You can add as much proportions of these colors as you want to. Um, if you really hate orange, you can just keep going down with more yellow and take it all the way down, totally up to you. And just go all the way down to the lines that you created before. You can even go over them if you need to. We'll put such dark colors on top that it's okay if it gets a little, little messy. By the end, the goal is generally somewhat just orange and yellow by themselves mixed together, not any white in your pile. So if you need to create a separate pile of those colors, if your other one was just too big and you could never get the white out of there, you can start new piles if you need to. 
Make sure you get all the way down to that yellow that you drew those on with and even cover them just so there's no lines later on of white for the canvas that we maybe need to cover up. And I'm just going in and feathering out some areas that didn't blend super well or just need a little bit more of the dark. Let's we'll do a little bit more orange and yellow. And if you're just seeing white canvas and too much of that showing through and your paintbrush is just gouging the paint too much, don't stress, just know a second layer will work. If you need to blend out any gouging though, while it's still wet, what you can do is you can lay your brush almost flat on your canvas and drag it across. And that'll smooth out a lot of sins when it comes to paint. Just kind of lay it flat, drag it across as long as your brush strokes can get and that'll take out any roughed up areas, any big deposits of paint that it got in the way, if you want to. If you like all that texture, just stick with it. Or if you're planning on a second layer, even better. All right, so if I try to go back and do anything up here, like I was just doing, the orange is not going to be blending in because it's too dry now. So I'd have to add water and then that would corrode the paint and make it just too difficult. So we wanna let it dry 100% now instead. So we will start with the blue up above and we'll probably let that dry before we get the transition going for our green because that green mixing with the yellow that is now a little bit too dry, it's just gonna maybe make a little bit of a mess. We're gonna play it safe. I'm going to start with my blue. I'll get the first layer of that just so that it's got some good foundation to begin with. I'm gonna clean up my big brush then. And so I wiped off the extra paint on my paper towel and then I'm going to flex it in my water cup. At the bottom of that cup, I'm gonna get that completely rinsed out. So gently flex it down there. And if you wipe off your paper towel, wait, paint on your paper towel, your paintbrush. If you do this, sometimes words are hard, so I just do the thing and then you guys can watch. Um, if the water is clear, you've got a clean brush. That's probably the longest explanation has ever taken me. So for the blue at the top, you can do whatever you'd like to if you wanna turn it more turquoisey, which will kind of be how the end goes because of its transition with the greens and everything. But if you want it to be more turquoisey, just add some of your yellow and some white to it. Um, if you want it to be a little bit moodier and a little bit more neutral looking, not neutral, but earthier, um, you can add some brown to it and that'll be a pretty color. I'll do a little bit of that just to turn it into, it's not quite green, but it is this kind of brownish bluish color like that. So you can see if it's sitting next to this pile right here, it's almost greenish. It's almost um, turquoise, but like a dark turquoise. So I like a little bit of brown in there just to neutralize. So it's not as strong of a color. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of white. I'll mix a larger section of that. It's gonna definitely be more blue than brown for that color. And make it as dark as you want, more or less blue, up to you. And by the end, when we have this dried, I will probably end up with two layers of this blue just to make sure that it does stay vibrant because when it's going on a white canvas, it's gonna be a lot harder to get a really intense layer without just doing two layers. So I'm gonna start that at the top of my canvas and you can just see how it's still pretty light because that white is shining through. So if you like that color, even better, it's, that's why we paint on white canvases is because we can take advantage of that luminosity from behind. I'm gonna start it at the top, and then when I get down to the yellow, and don't forget to wet your brush if your paint is just kind of getting really hard to push around. Um, when you get down to the yellow, you don't have to stress too much about how they meet each other. I'm just gonna kind of get really close to my yellow, let my paint run out, and just kind of do that feathering, um, but I'm not gonna try to blend them yet. They don't really play nice with each other until we really work on it. So I'll do that. I'm gonna add maybe a little extra blue and brown and try to do a little bit of the shading. So I'm gonna darken the top and start feathering that down into the blue. But you can see all those brush strokes more than you can see it down this pale color because it's sitting on top of a white canvas. You can just see it much better. So much better or worse, whatever your feelings are about it. So I'm going to try to smooth that a little bit and then I'm just gonna do a blow dry off camera. We'll put a little still screen for you guys to enjoy more than my blow drying. Um, and we'll be back in just a minute. When you're done with this, put it in your water cup and then let this dry. And we'll be back again in a second.
Okie dokie. So we have a dry canvas. I did dry off my orange as well. So the whole thing is ready for whatever happens next. So what I will be doing is actually starting down in my yellow once again. And now that it's dry, this can take a second layer. It's going to be even more vibrant this time, but it will allow us to then transition into our transition color, which is going to be a green that goes in between the blue and the yellow. When blue and yellow mix, they make green. So it's a really cool color to put in between them and it really looks very nice. I want to start with a medium sized brush for this though, because I don't necessarily want my brush strokes to be as big to begin with. So I'm going to start with my medium sized brush. I'll also just mix the color with that, get it wet first, make sure it's not dripping wet. And then I'm going to mix my green. So I'm going to scoop up some white, put it near my yellow and blue. And it's going to be mostly yellow, but you do want it to be pretty bright um, so that it really looks like it's a transition of this really bright yellow and that blue. So I'm going to start with mostly yellow and white, and then I put in a tiny, tiny bit of blue, like I took a corner of it. I'll start that in and then I can always pull in a lot more, but that tints it very quickly. Accidents have been known to happen. And I'll also transition. I'll just kind of do that wet and wet blending and go up into my blue after I'm done with it. So we'll be able to darken it if we need to even while it's still wet. So I'm going towards kind of a limey green, more or less. I'm gonna wipe this off and then I'm gonna clean my brush thoroughly because I'm gonna start down in the yellow butter color. And if you guys are just watching for funsies, go ahead and comment where you guys are watching from. We love to find out where the movies go and what's, what's happening in the world. So if you guys are watching at home, could you leave a comment with where you are from? We would love to know. So I'm starting with my yellow and white, similar to we've done before. And if you want to, you can pull in a little bit of that orange like we had done. You could just mix into that old pile and that would have made more sense. But I start with a fresh color, maybe a little bit more white. It's kind of depending on whatever you want your second layer to look like. So if you want to change the color completely, totally up to you. Don't forget to add some white into it. You don't want it to be too bright or it won't transition naturally. So I'm going to start kind of where that orange is really to gauge the color. And I'm really putting very little pressure in, even swirling my brush a little bit. Make sure your brush stays damp while you're doing this because you can switch to your larger brush if you want to, but if you're using the small one, you want to make sure that you've got plenty of time to blend into it. So it has to be wet for that. So this you can add water to because it's also got a foundation of the color underneath so you don't have to worry about it making as good of a coverage so i'm kind of watering it down and just having that transition come down into the orange and just brighten it up with a little bit more yellow just while i'm here you can do that later if you don't want to do it yet and then just making sure it's all fresh yellow so i've got something to blend into that's still wet wipe off my brush and then my green is all ready to dive into so i'm going to start above the yellow and you can decide if you like that color or not now. You can always change it up just by testing it on the canvas. You can kind of see how you like some things. And you can always just paint on top of it if you want to change it. So I'm going to start above the yellow and start transitioning down into it. Don't forget to keep your brush damp. And if you need to pick up some pure yellow to create an easier transition, you can. So I'm just going to create now a combining of those colors across the canvas. So this is where I will make sure that it's not a stripe going across. I want to make sure that there's kind of a cloud of it that travels up and down and is not just straight across, but goes kind of up and down in some areas like we were doing before. I'll just kind of make little brush strokes that travel downwards into the orange and yellow and then up into the blue. Though we are more focused on trying to get the green to mix in with the yellow at this point, and then we'll add the blue and that'll make that all look a little less messy. Even this can take two layers and that won't change anything. You just have to let it dry and be patient, which is even more hard, I think, than painting. It's just being patient and not painting. What I've done is I've added more blue and yellow to that color, so now there's less white in there. And that's what I'll start to transition up into the blue with. I'll probably come down and clean up a little bit of the yellow and green, but you want it to be a little messy. You still want it to have a little 
brushy texture, a little pizzazz, if you will. Okay, so now that we've made a nice mess of it, let's go up with that color into the blue. It's okay if it doesn't look like a natural blend quite yet, it'll help once we get the blue mixed in. So I just kind of want to make sure there's no white canvas peeking through and then I'll start pulling more blue in. So I just kind of finish off that green and I'll just start stirring more blue into that green color and start brushing down and I'm having to remind myself to kind of mess it up and make sure again, it doesn't get stripey. I'm going to do a couple brush strokes that go downwards and into the green from before with this dark and brush it across. All right, so for that first bit, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like that and I'll switch to my big brush and start the blue up above again and do my second layer and it'll start to blend in. So I'll pretty much mix that same color again. If you had some left over, even better. I am the queen of never mixing enough color the first time. So that was blue, a little bit of white and brown. All right, we're gonna start at the top of the canvas again. There's not much area to fill up there before we start running into the green. And you'll find it's just so much easier to blend with that big brush, trying to get these large areas filled in. So I'm gonna start kind of feathering across into that green. And if you need to, if you need to kind of bounce down there, you can turn your brush on its side, kind of feather down. But I'll probably just do a second layer on that green instead. Just to make sure, it's really about just making the colors vibrant and just a little bit more natural. And sometimes it's just not, it's not great to try to do all in one go. It's okay to need multiple layers, build and do just more coverage a couple times. That is absolutely okay. Especially with these colors that are so sensitive to each other, this blue and this yellow mixing together create a new color. So they're not simple to mix. They're not simple to make look natural. So if they just keep combining and doing weird things, the second layer is just gonna be easier to apply because you don't have to apply as much paint. And it's got, again, the foundation that is gonna give it a good starting point. So I'm going to leave this, I'm gonna dry it off camera again, just to be sure, and then I'll show you the next step, which is really just gonna be kind of repeating these same steps, maybe start with some yellow again. And it's just gonna create those more vibrant colors with easy job transitioning them. So I'll be back in a second. All right, so I dried just the green and the blue, which was the only thing that was wet at this point. I've got those really dry now, and I'm gonna do more of a glaze this time. I'm gonna bring a little bit of the yellow up there. So I'm gonna grab my big brush just because it helps to get large areas filled in. And I'm gonna clean that out a bajillion percent. It's very important that there be no blue that comes down into this yellow, unless you wanna just see what happens and see what that kind of glaze of green is. If you want it to be more, more greeny, if you wanna take that down. That could be cute. So maybe just let it happen if you did it on accident. But I'm gonna try to keep the colors a little bit more pure. So I'm gonna do just yellow. A little bit of white if you want to. Just 
just to make it a little bit more opaque. Add a little bit of water to your brush. I'm gonna start down underneath the green again, and then I'm gonna start brushing without much pressure up into the yellow and even up into the blue just a little bit. So you can do whichever of those versions of the yellow that you like, whether it have some orange in it or not. And I'm just gonna start bringing it up on top of the blue and green areas. And by putting a glaze of the same color up on top of those things, it just gives it, it's like putting a filter on something. So a glaze is really just a filter. If you decide that something looks too blue or something looks too anything, or it's just too bright, you can take white even and do a glaze to give it more of a soft focus or atmosphere or something like that. You can just water down paint and put it in front of another color and it gives it this little bit of a filter. Again, it's just like a filter. I mean, that's really the best way to describe it. So we're gonna Instagram this to make it look exactly how we want. And it's actually in oil painting. I mean, you can do some of it in acrylics like we're doing right now. In oil painting, you would actually put oil, of course, in the colors and glaze. And some people only paint in glazes. It's actually just a technique to slowly build up. That's what watercolors are, is slowly building up tiny amounts of pigment and water until you have as much um, as much color as you want. And you start with white paper and you just slowly, slowly, slowly build up until you're at a color that makes you happy. So we're gonna do a little bit of that here. We're gonna see what happens. I like paintings that have, and so you can drag some colors in there on accident and we'll just pretend like, hey, let's see what happens. Totally meant to do it. Um, my favorite thing is painting like fog and mist and um, different layers of just atmosphere and things like that. And so I like to do a lot of glazing in, in my work. It always feels like you're kind of struggling. Your arm gets a little bit tired because you're trying to push the paint long areas. And you have to do it quickly because this dries pretty quickly. But it is a great way to just build things up and create atmosphere or texture without having to just keep doing layers of paint again and again and again. You can just do it this way. All right, I'm gonna add more white, which gives it some opacity and you can do a little bit thicker paint wherever you just need a little bit better coverage. That green, even if we're that gentle, can a lot of times just still, because it's such a hard change from something that's so pale and glowing as yellow, and then you go right into a dark color of green, things like that. A lot of times you have to do a lot of pushing and pulling in paint, and that doesn't mean you did anything wrong, it just means it's gonna look even more more awesome, because more layers that you build, the more texture that you build up, the more times you have to do a layering, just the more interesting it looks. So don't stress if you feel like you just have to do five layers of paint. That is so not the end of the world. Um, some paintings just take that. That is okay. So don't fight the painting so much. Just maybe sometimes let it dry. Let it think about what's done for like a second. Come back to it later. And just know that that's not you screwing up. That's just you learning. So there's this one little piece over here that I keep trying to cover up. That dark green. If you wanna do a thick area of paint, you have to lay the brush flat. It's like a butter knife. It delivers more the flatter it is. So lay it down flat if you wanna do any heavy coverage. And by the end, I might come back to the little corner and fix it, but we don't wanna to spend too much time. It's just not fun for you guys to watch. So I'm gonna pretty much leave it about here. I know the tree's gonna go right here, so I'm not gonna try to fix this little area. If you want it a little bit more blue, you can totally come back and do a little bit more blue. But again, I want it to be a little bit more fun for you guys to watch. So if I decide to visit that later, it'll be towards the end. Once we get the tree and everything on top, a lot of times what you're really getting bothered by with your painting is just not gonna be that big of a deal. So we've got the background. Let's start getting the focal point built towards. So we're gonna fill the hillsides in first and then we'll do the tree. So we're letting this dry by actually filling in there, our hills now. So I'm gonna switch to my medium sized brush. Honestly, for the sky, the best rule is just leave it alone before you're comfortable doing it because, again, it's probably not gonna bother you as much once it's not the only thing on your canvas. So I'm gonna clean up my medium-sized brush. I will show you our first hill, and then it's gonna be kind of the same steps for the, for the other one, so I won't talk as much for that second one. Our color towards the top, it gradiate, gradiates, gradiates, is that a word? 
it was a gradation. Cameraman was not very helpful. <laughs> so, and if you guys have any questions for me, just know that there is a dude on the camera. His name is Brad. And if you have any questions whatsoever, just let him know and he'll forward them on to me. So I am here for you. If you have any silly questions or anything like that, just ask me. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is mix a uh, gradation, a gradient of pale towards the bottom. We'll start with some white and then it's gonna be kind of a sandy dune color and then it's gonna go up towards a brown towards the very, very top. So we've obviously got our brown here. We darken that with our blue actually, just like we had done for our sky. It's now gonna be a little bit of blue to mostly brown and that's just how we create that. That's how we're gonna do our tree and everything like that. Like, that's why we don't have black on our palette because these actually work beautifully together. But we need that sandy color. So what we're gonna do is start with white. Go ahead and scoop up a good amount because we want there to be plenty for both hills that we're gonna have to do. And you're just gonna pull in a teeny bit of yellow, teeny tiny bit. Can always add more, don't forget. So slowly add it. And these hills don't have to be exactly the same color. If you decide you want maybe a little orange in there, experiment on your palette. So it's gonna be really pale, and then I'll put some brown in there. This can be our pale color. So just slowly pull in little bits of brown till it gets to a tan, kind of a yellowish tan, just whatever kind of looks like sand to you. Sandy dune color. Okay. Sure, why not? Okay. So that's gonna be kind of our mid color, our mid tones. We'll start with white and then we'll add that. And then we're gonna go in with our darker color, which is going to be some brown, just a little bit of white. And we're just making kind of just the, the general transition. So white, this color, then this, which is gonna be a little bit of brown, a little bit of white. It's really kind of a darker shade of that and a touch of yellow. Cool. So probably like equal parts brown and yellow and just a little bit of white, more or less. Don't forget when you're pulling from your yellow or your any of your colors really, you're always pulling from the edge, especially with your white, you're pulling from the edge so you don't dirty up that pile with a dirty brush. So if you dipped right in the center, it's gonna be really hard to find pure white later on. So try to just pull from the edges as you're going. Okay, so white, whatever this is, and this brown color. I'm just gonna wipe off my brush. It doesn't have to be super well cleaned. I'm gonna start at the bottom. I'm just gonna scoop up some white. We'll do this hill first. Start at the bottom. Just gonna get a stripe of this filled in. We don't need a ton of the white to begin with. Just gonna get that stripe filled in. Um, and then we're going to change the shape just a little bit. Uh, we want this to come over. It doesn't come down now. It's gonna come over just a little bit, but it's gonna, I'll go ahead and draw with this darker one. So it's going to lift up and then it'll fill in it'll get covered up with this hill that's gonna cut in front. So where this ends does not really matter. We just want it to kind of level out now and cut across to at least like maybe two thirds way across your canvas and we'll cover up whatever that leaves off. So that's approximately what we'll fill it into. The other lines were just to help us sketch for the sky, but now we're actually trying to define where the hills go. So I'm gonna put a little bit of white a little bit farther across now. And then I'm gonna go into my second color which is that yellow and white. It's gonna look pretty similar to the white on the camera, but it's a good transition color between the white and that brown that's gonna be our darker color. And then I'm gonna go right into that. I'm gonna start up the hill at the kind of the top of it, and then I'll start brushing it downwards. And here I'm almost looking for more of that smooth transition than I was in the sky. Um, but if you want it to be a little bit choppier and look a little sandier, just do little short choppy brush strokes, just like you did in your sky. And it'll just be a little bit more textured, a little bit more interesting. But what I'll do is I'll take this color now once it's filled in, and I'm going to go back down the hill and have those long brush strokes that go the whole distance. And it's really gonna smooth it out and create a really soft transition. You really wanna start off the canvas, flatten out your brush, drag it all the way across that hill, and you'll get something very, very smooth. Now I wanna go for the darkest color, which we haven't mixed yet, which is brown and a touch of blue. It's okay if there's a little white in there. That'll be our darkest color. I 
I just want a little bit of that because I don't have to blend in too much. And we'll probably do another layer of this dark color once it's dry, just to make sure that it sits on top nicely. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use it to outline the hill, go for the very, very top. Outline the whole way across, make whatever peak, whatever, how pointy or how soft you want that to be. And then I'm gonna wipe off all the extra so it doesn't carry down the hill too much. And I picked up my slight, this next uh, more pale color, the middle color that we had done. And I'm gonna start underneath that and start pulling it down. And that'll be my last color. I'll do that softening out thing once I pull it down a little bit farther. Take this down as far as you want to, as far as you want the sandy colors to go. Or if you want it to be mostly pale, you can do that. Keep that, that pale the whole way that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and draw this hillside in the front so that I know where the one that's underneath the tree, this guy, is going to go. There's a third one we haven't even drawn yet. So I will do that with my dark color, which is blue and a little, well, it's, it's brown and a little bit of blue. So mostly, mostly brown. Make sure that you do a good job flipping your brush over and making sure both sides get mixed in. And if it looks like chocolate, milk chocolate, then you've got it. So about three fingers in on the left hand side, give yourself a little tick mark off the edge of the canvas for your drawing. Wherever this hill side goes to the top or like where we started, where we did our sketches about four fingers up, you want it to be about a finger lower than that. If you've changed your mind where you want this hill side to be, then make it up if you'd like to, but whatever you made that height, you want it to be about a finger shorter, more or less. And then you're just gonna create a sweeping line that cuts right across. And then you can just kind of make it more soft with that, maybe a, a peak on it, or make it as bumpy as you want. Totally up to you. Um, and if you want to, you can fill it in with this color. I'm gonna probably do, need a second layer of it anyway, so I'll go ahead and fill this in just so I can make it messy and then the second layer can be much tidier. All right, just whatever brown you got on your brush, just fill it in. As you can see, I've had to remix this color about three times because like I said, if I'm the master of one thing, it is never having the right amount of color. You gotta be good at something, right? It's important. Everyone's gotta have their thing. Okay. Messy, 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 perfect. So that's layer number one. It's gonna be darker when we're done with it. So if you remember, what you're gonna do is start out with white. This is obviously a lot smaller area to mix, so we're not gonna have to do as much, much work. So I'll start with a white at the bottom. Do, do, do. And then our second color, which I actually mixed enough of, look at me go. Start a slightly above that, but mostly you're just gonna kind of fill up that white. But it just gives us a nice ombre look to just have a little bit of that glow factor down at the bottom by leaving a little tiny bit white. Okay, and then I'm gonna go into this color, which I don't have that much. I'm gonna go ahead and mix another brown and yellow and a tiny bit of white. You're just really, really good at blending colors to match if you have to blend each color five times to get the job done. All right, start that above that white mixture that we had done. Do a nice stripe of that. It's good to take that just kind of all the way up. And then you'll go with your darkest color. And guess what? I need to mix that dark color again. Okay. If you need to just kind of blend it down into those first colors, just with no paint on your brush, you can kind of push those wet colors into each other. So if you are needing to blend down into those pale colors, wipe off your brush first 
and then you can kind of just drag it through there. Okay, so brown and blue. And that's your last darkest color. This, because it's such a dark color, same as with the blue up above, it's such a dark color on a really pale canvas. So if you end up needing two layers of it, you can always come back and just define them with a, with a more vibrant outline. I'm just gonna soften that and have it transition into the color down below, which is short choppy brush strokes. Make sure your brush hasn't dried out too much to do that. You'll see it get caught in the canvas and not be able to settle into the texture of the cotton. And that's because the paint is just not even wet enough at that point to get into the texture. So just make sure your brush stays damp. Yeah, I'll probably need two layers of this dark color. We'll just come back to that later. We want it to dry pretty, pretty well before we get to that. And that way the next color will be even stronger. The reason we let it dry is because if paint is wet, if you keep painting on top of it, it keeps lifting the other paint. We need to give it a chance to dry or it'll keep gouging. Or if you're trying to mix a different color and change the color that's on the canvas, but you keep trying to paint into the other wet paint that's underneath, they're just gonna keep picking up that other color that's still wet and continuing to make mud on your canvas. So a lot of times it's just all about waiting for things to dry. It's like watching paint dry. I know, it can get tedious, but it's important to the process. Going back in a little bit of white because I wanna divide those hills just a little bit. And it's still a little bit damp, so I can go right back in and soften some things up. Okay, I gotta leave it alone now. I'm gonna do my second layer to this guy because it was such a thin coat, I can put another layer on top. So this I wanna darken up quite a bit, so I'll add more blue and just pure brown, and it'll be even darker because it's not sitting on just a white canvas. So brown, a little bit of blue, and if you want it to be a little warmer, if you don't want it to just be bluish, you can add a little yellow to it. But you still want it to be mostly brown because you don't want it to, you don't want it to be bluish. You want it to be more of that warm, warm brown. So I'm gonna just gonna put a little bit of yellow in mine. But if there's too much blue in there, then it will turn it green. So, eh, like that. All right, so I've got kind of this chocolatey brown here. I'm gonna go ahead and define that line up top. It's gonna be a similar color. We come back to paint on top of the other hills for an outline. And then I'm just gonna fill it in again. You can see how much darker this can be now with our second layer. And just fill in this hillside. Looks like chocolate. Looks nice. What we're gonna do is have highlights on top of these, some little white lines. So if the top edges don't look quite as polished as you want, maybe, we're gonna do some cool designs in front of them, so it'll be fine. I'm gonna go through and do that softening, dragging across, just in case there's any gouges out of it. I wanna smooth this hillside. I wanna make it look like no one stepped foot on it. Fresh sand. I'm just gonna drag my brush all the way across, kinda of laying it flat. And then I think this first hillside would be ready for that dark outline again. It has dried out, it just wasn't a thick coating. So I'm just gonna go ahead, turn my brush on its side, follow the top, and I've got myself a nice dark line. If you're having trouble keeping this paintbrush thin, do these lines. What you have to do is you have to press out all the extra paint so you get it loaded up. And then the more paint it's holding, the bigger the bristles have to expand in order to hold that paint. So in order to get a thin line, this I find easier to get a thin line than I do with a pointed brush. I use this for all my 
um, my precise work. The other one's good for like putting dots or things like that or little details, but this is great for doing lines. So what you'll do is you'll push out all the extra paint, flip your brush on both sides and press out all the extra and you've got a brush that is razor thin. Um, so you can still draw with this completely for those large areas that need a good line drawn on them. So I'm gonna go right back up and put the darkest brown on both of these hills with that, that sharp edge. So I've got my brush sitting flat up and down. And there you go, you've got the top of those hillsides. Okay. All right, so what I wanna do now is actually dry my canvas another time, just so I don't drag my sleeve through this while I'm painting the big important tree. And I will do that, it's been known to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a final dry break. Maybe not final, we'll find out. We'll all find out together and I'll be back in another second. All right, it is tree time. So again, I just dried off my hillsides. They're still warm from that heater. Um, I just don't wanna drag my sleeve through them. So what we're gonna do next is the tree. So I'm gonna break it down for you, of course, step by step. But before you get started, I would wait after you watch just a couple steps in and then get started on yours. So what we're gonna be doing is starting with the tree trunk and generally the rule for your tree, this is the funky tree. So you can do whatever you want to with the design. You can make it swirly, you can make it zigzaggy. I've had people just make a giant honking tree, put a hole in it and put an owl and that looks great. You've got yourself a blank background, a clean slate. You can do whatever design that you want to for your tree. There's no need to copy completely. So that being said, the only rules I recommend you guys follow is the general principles for how to paint a tree. And that is making sure that the tree trunk itself at the roots is the thickest part of the tree and everything from there tapers and narrows as it gets away from it. So that also means the branches should be thinner than the trunk that they're coming out of and the small twigs that come out of those branches should be smaller than the branch they're coming out of. So just with everything, it should get smaller from the tree trunk. And most people, when they see something that just looks a little off with their tree, it's simply because the branch they just painted is thicker than whatever it was growing out of. That's it. So other than that, you guys can go crazy with your tree. You can make it again zigzag, you can make it swirly, like I'm gonna be showing you with some actual swirls and stuff. So it's still a funky, fun design. I know you can get away with whatever you want to with your tree. It just will look a little bit better if you follow that basic principle and that is it. So I'm gonna go ahead and break down the shape for this one, more or less. Mine's not gonna be exactly the same as the original one. It's always a little bit different. That's the fun of painting. So we're gonna sketch out first. And once you get the sketch and the proportions to the way that you like with small thin lines, this is what a sketch really is. You create a messy thing that can be erased or painted over, and then you can grow once you see just the general principle for where your tree is gonna be going. So I'm gonna actually grab my small brush so I can do a little sketch. And that's where I'll leave all my accidents. I'll leave all my accidents in my sketch part. Um, I'm just gonna get it wet first. And I wanna make sure that my paint is kind of damp when I'm drawing with it, just so it flows easily. So I'm going to get it wet, but then I'm also gonna come with some of that water and stir it into my brown. The color of this does not really matter because again, it's gonna get covered up. And just a heads up, if some line gets really weird, 
Um, it's easier than trying to paint over it later if it gets like where you're just not gonna put the tree. Just take a little bit of spit on your finger and smudge it out or just even with a dry finger to smudge it out. Um, even if you had like a little corner of your paper towel ready to go to smudge out that paint, that is a lot faster than um, trying to paint it out by mixing your background colors. Even though that is good practice, we talked about that, is really good practice. It's not ideal. So I've got watered down brown, that's gonna be my sketch color, it just has to be dark enough for you to see. And I'm gonna be drawing now the funky tree. So we'll start where we want our goal points to be, which is kind of where the bend in the tree is gonna be. Right off the bat, I wanna warn you guys, when I see people get little kind of weird, sad looking trees, it's only when they come up here to this curve and they bend it. Like right here, bend the tree rather than giving it a gentle curve. And that makes it look like it's a dead tree. So that's the one thing I want to warn you guys about is making sure you go for a curve. All of these lines should be curved rather than bent, otherwise they'll look broken off. So just a heads up for that. So right first, we're gonna go about three fingers in from the the right hand side. I'm gonna give myself a little line. That's kind of where I want the center of the tree to go, but it'll just be a, a general starting point. We just don't want too close to the outside or we won't have room for branches to come off on that, uh, on the right hand side. So that'll be a starting point. Of course, we start at the top of this hill here. I'm just gonna create a line that goes somewhat up and see, don't have to be worried about even having a solid line. This is just gonna be, at the beginning of my tree is gonna be like this thick. So it's fine if you've got a messy, in inner line and then about let's say if we divide this canvas into thirds let's say our hills are about a third of the way up our green starts about a third of the way up you want or a third of the way down you want the bend in your tree to about be a third of the way down so about where your green starts more or less if your proportions were completely different than mine then just imagine a third of the way down your canvas approximately so a third of the way down what you want to do is not go like this. You want to instead slowly bend your brush. Just create a little, a little curved line here. And again, our tree is going to be like this thick, so the internal line can be messy. And then the other thing that people hesitate to do is take it far enough over. So what we wanna do is have the goal for the end of this branch, this line, to be about two thirds of the way, or actually let's say about a quarter of the way in your canvas. If you imagine to divide this into a quarter, so here's the halfway mark of your canvas, which is about where we started now, we wanna go another quarter of the way. So I'm just gonna take this curve over here. So it's mostly, it's mostly about this being a curve, not a bend, not a snapped tree. Make that a curve. It's just the beginning points. Don't stress if yours looks a little funky. I mean, it's supposed to look funky though. It's the name of the painting. So maybe you're just doing an excellent job. All right, so technically this branch goes about here. This is where it'll start to curve down to a swirl. Before we get there, before we start doing the individual branches, we're gonna go ahead and substantiate this tree trunk so we have a little bit more guidance for that. So I'm gonna switch to my medium brush and we'll do a little bit of hopping back and forth. We're spending our time trying to get proportions a little bit closer because this is the focal point of the painting. There's going to be just the tree here. So take your time putting out the, um, the thickness of it, the uh, number of branches, all those sorts of things. Just take your time with this and build it however you feel confident in doing it. Change the design if you want to, um, but just take your time on this. This is the focal point. So I'm gonna do my brown, and I'm gonna go ahead and with two layers for this tree. So I'm just gonna go with my brown, maybe a little bit of blue to start out with, and there will be two layers. So this does not have to go on thick enough. Um, for this first layer, just like the hillsides. We are gonna pretty, pretty much just need another layer just to make sure that it sits on this pale color easier. So I'm gonna go ahead with the tree trunk, how thick that's gonna be, and I'm gonna go with about two fingers to start, and I want it to be about two fingers from the end of the canvas. So if you can give yourself about two fingers here, and then about two fingers here, that's about as thick as I want that tree trunk to get. Maybe a little bit thinner in there, so that'll be the thickest though. So I'm going to bring these lines down to the hillside and I'm going to bring them to curve on top of the hill, just like roots are spreading out. And don't worry about trying to make the sides super smooth. We want them to be a little bit uh, bumpy, just like a tree would have a little bit more character to it. We want it to be a little bit bumpy. Um, and that's gonna be like the thickest part. So I'm just gonna kind of finish off my sketch. I'm gonna do a couple just bumps in the tree where they're just not always following one straight line. And I'm going to start just 
slowly tapering the tree, slowly, slowly tapering the tree towards the end. So about where my line stopped, I want it to be about the width of this brush turn on its side. And then we'll come back in with a smaller brush to add the branches that actually swirl. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in. So this is where if your sketch ends up being the center of your tree or if it ends up being the side of it, this is where you can correct where your sketch was a little bit weird or just not quite right. Your sketch is there for you to learn how to paint the thing that you're actually intending to paint. So that's where you can make your, your boo-boos and then you just cover them up or when you're doing a drawing, you erase them. This is gonna look pretty grody until we do our second layer, but definitely until we start adding branches, it's gonna look like a weird naked what does this look like? This looks like a Tootsie Roll that got stretched out or something, I don't know. So, if you're just not quite sure where the end is, don't worry, just keep painting. We should have our own song. We should have Dory singing, just keep painting, just keep painting. And we'll get to the end together, even if it looks really weird the whole way. I definitely, I've been painting for just a little while myself and I can't think of a painting that I've done that I don't still think, oh no, what am I doing? I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna get to the end. That is okay. If you feel that way, that just means you're about halfway there, probably more. All right, so I'm just filling this all in. This is just the first layer, so you see those gouges going out and you see the sky behind them. That is great. You're on track. I think most of painting is just making a mess and then the last two minutes of the painting is making the mess make sense. That's what painting feels like to me. So if it makes you uncomfortable, then you are following the steps. Okay. All right, well maybe it looks like a sad tree no matter what you do. So let's go ahead and add some branches. That'll help. First layer done. I'm going to sketch my branches to make sure they're placed correctly. It's mostly just the fact that we don't have like leaves and things that are gonna go in front of this to make it look happier. It's all branches. We've got those polka dots though and those glowing lights and kind of orby things that go on top and that does like a lot for the whole vibe of the tree. So, um, but just the fact that we don't hide things means that the branches are going to take a little bit more work to draw a little bit more precisely. We're not gonna have anything to cover them up, but, but if you do something real weird, we'll just put a glowing orb thingy on top of it and then it'll make it look ethereal. All your mistakes can become ethereal. So we'll start and it's best if you have the reference photo, that's what I'm looking at to get these branches in. Um, but if you just wanna wait until I'm done with the tree and use the reference, um, that's a good idea too. Um, Cause I'm gonna be following that. If you just wanna go off and do your own thing and do the branches wherever you want them, that is perfect too but I'm gonna follow the original one and do some sketches for where those branches go. Um, and so I'm just gonna water down some brown paint again and I'll just draw these all out. And this is gonna help with a small brush. I'll be able to do the end, the swirl with the small brush and then I'll probably switch to my medium sized brush to really fill in the areas where I want them to transition out of the tree trunk. Keep in mind, let's see where I can do this. So keep in mind, you don't want branches that just come out like this just straight out like that. You want them to curve and transition out of the tree. You don't want them to just be a hard line. You want them to curve their edges and grow outwards very naturally. So that is uh, another thing that makes trees just look like they're actually meant to be there is by having just that, that smooth curve coming out rather than just something poking out. So that is an important part to integrate in whatever design you're coming up with. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, hopefully there's some background music because I'm probably not gonna talk you through every single branch. Following those basic principles, the only other thing is kind of following along to see where there's some branches that maybe you wanna put on yours or if there's branches you absolutely hate and you don't. 
It's not very important where they go, but I'll show you guys the swirls first, and then you can put those on if you want to, on whatever branches you decide to. So over here, it's just a little bit better of a contrast. So I'll do it over here so you guys can see it. So I'm gonna do the very last swirl, which goes like halfway down the tree and is really close to the other side of your canvas. So we made ourselves do this line. Let's go ahead and continue it now into its final swirl down here so that you can just kind of see how to paint a swirl. Though, keep in mind, if you got a kit, you also got that paper for your table to protect your surface. So it's a really good idea to actually practice your swirls a couple times on that paper and then that way when you go to your canvas you've just got a couple under your belt and that really does help so swirls are weirdly complicated for whatever reason for me i sometimes like to start in the center of them just so that i space the lines if you start on the outside you might not end with as many spiral uh, lines inside whereas if you start in the center you start with a dot i'll just show you this is definitely not going to end well um, I'm not gonna flip my palette over. I was about to do that, let's just not. <laughs> so if you start on the outside, you can swirl inside, but you can't figure out where, you can't decide how much room you have in the center. Whereas if you start in the center, you can swirl out as many times as you want and end up with as big a one as you want. So that's really why starting in the center, the benefit to starting in the center is really just just that. So whatever you end up being comfortable with, I tend to switch kind of back and forth, depending on how many swirls. If you don't have a good complete spiral, and you only just have a little bit of a curve, then it doesn't really matter. Anyway, so that's over talking spirals for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and space this one down here. So I want this to be about a third of the way into the canvas and about halfway down my tree. So I'm gonna start with a dot over here. And I'm just gonna slowly, and I'm not filling in as thick as I want this line to be in the end because I want to just get my sketch in first. And I'm spiraling around, just figure out how many you want. And then I'm gonna transition this into the actual branch. However, that needs to meet back up. Now, I've made sure not to have a really, really straight line. I'm trying to force myself to kind of mess it up a little bit so that um, I just don't end up with something that's too curvy. I want it to look a little bit natural by having uneven lines and things that swirl around just a little bit more, just naturally, it means it's not super straight. So the less perfect it is, the more natural it looks, is kind of the, the rule. So then for this guy, um, there's gonna be a branch coming out from this, and we're gonna thicken all of these things with our medium-sized brush later. So this one's not gonna be a closed spiral, so I can do whatever I want to with this, and this is just going to be my sketch for everything. So break them off into other branches, swirl them as many times as you want to. Don't forget the water on your brush will help with everything. And just start building this tree into whatever shape and design that you want to. When I do trees, I zone out, so I'm not gonna talk as much as I probably should, <laughs> but hopefully you guys have that music in the background that helps a little bit, and just go ahead and kinda zone out and do some branches with me, and I will have some fun doing some swirls. Just don't forget that curve out of those branches, and I'm just gonna zone out. I'm gonna do that, zone out and do some swirlies. Don't forget this is the sketch. So these are not as thick as these lines will be. This is just to help me know where those branches will go. And then I'll switch to my medium sized brush to thicken them up. But towards the end, I'll thicken them up with this brush later. I just wanna make sure the sketch is good first. It's a solid sketch first.
So I've got all of my branches in. There's a little, little twiggy guy down here. All right, so I've got all of those in. So really what I'm gonna be doing for this next step is just the second layer. But now that I have all of the elements in, I know where the thickest portions are. And now I know where the thinnest portions are. Now I can start to really do the the tapering in a more natural looking way. So it's obviously really thick here. And then you get out here, it's really, really thin. And I don't want them to eventually be that thin out towards those edges. So I'm gonna mix my same kind of brown and blue color, mostly brown, little bits of blue just to darken it. And eventually I'll come back in and do a second layer here. It's still a little tacky though, so I'm not gonna worry about it quite yet. So I'm just gonna go back to these because I put the paint on so thin, I can go in and really thicken these up. Um, still make sure there's water in your brush so the paint spreads uh, easily but now I can really just kind of decide how thick I actually want these to be, and I can more easily do the transitioning back to the tree trunk. That makes just a little bit more sense. So this is layer number two to those branches, and now I'm gonna be paying a lot more attention to how they taper. So that's just that they don't go too quickly to being too thin, and that when they come to meet the tree trunk, they don't just suddenly get thick or suddenly get thin. They are just a gentle growing or narrowing into the density that they need to be to just like look just a little bit more like we intend them to. So this is not necessarily a lot of talking happening with this one. It's just gonna be a slower process for building up this tree. And when you're doing a lot of this painting, just make sure that you're like leaning back from your canvas, looking at it from a distance and judging uh, the big picture, seeing if there's any branches that look a little weird. It's better to do that from a distance. Um, so you can kind of focus in on whether or not one is finished. Uh, it's really hard to see up close sometimes for the big picture. So it's a really good idea to kind of lean back or take a picture with your cell phone, see what you think once it's shrunk down and see if there's any that kind of just stand out to you. So I'll do that whole quiet time again. Hopefully it's not too too boring for you guys. You guys can paint your canvases or just watch a painting come together. And I'll do this as quickly as I can so then we can start talking again. Now's a good time to ask any questions that you guys have. We are opening the studio back up. Finally have some events just in time for Valentine's Day. We are so excited to see you guys in studio. Our kits will remain available, our at-home painting kits. They come with, of course, all of the supplies that you need to create the painting that you choose and a video guide for the whole process, step-by-step -step, for you to use at any time. So you can paint on your schedule at home whenever you want to. Or with groups, I love when people do it as their meet with friends and they paint online and they're on a talking call with a friend while you guys are painting the same thing. It's like painting at the studio almost with your friends, but we are opening back up. We've got events on the calendar. Go to uncorkedcanvas.com and you can paint with us in our art studio. We got our wine bar open for you guys. And we just can't wait to paint with you in person again. It's been way too long. We're so excited. Valentine's Day is about to be amazing, just in time. We've got our date nights for Valentine's almost full up, but there's still a couple seats open. So it's painting one, painting across two canvases. So you guys share an art piece across two canvases. It is so much fun. So romantic. So that is what we'll be doing for our fun dates here. But those paintings are also home home kit available as well. So you guys could do it at home if you want to. Don't forget as you're painting these branches, do that lean back thing. Try to look at it from a distance. See if there's anything that just stands out 
as not being quite a smooth transition. And then honestly, those polka dots and fun colors on top are just gonna make this so much happier than it maybe looks quite yet. It looks almost like a Halloween tree. So if you're looking for that creepy vibe, yes, we did it. I should probably just turn this into a Halloween painting. Just do the oranges like the whole way up and then do some pumpkins on the hillsides or something. Maybe a black cat somewhere, that'd be cute. All right, slowly, slowly coming together. It is okay to do like three layers to your tree. Again, it's dark color sitting on top of a very pale canvas with our sky colors. So it's okay to need to build those colors up. If we were doing the opposite, if we had a black canvas or painting our pale colors on top of that, we'd have to do the opposite. We'd have to do a lot of layers of this to make, get those pure dark colors. So it's all about, it's all about the process, depending on what you're trying to achieve. come back and do a recount of how many times I've mixed this color. If you're trying to steady your hand by putting your arm on your canvas, just do a double check that everything that you're resting your hand against is indeed dry. I've dragged my sleeve and my hand through plenty of things and left smudges, but I do always steady my hand by kind of resting on the canvas so that I can not have to be so careful with the brush. If you're back here trying to do control work, it's just gonna end up maybe a little bit more random than you want. So if you're looking for control, it's like a pen, you're just gonna hold it at the very end to get the most control. I think that's my final one. I'm gonna to switch to my medium brush, fill in the tree trunk again. It's all the same color, mostly brown, a little bit of blue to darken it. This is layer number two on that tree trunk. Just make sure it's a nice even coat. And if you're still seeing through it, it's okay to have a little bit of texture with your brush strokes. That can just look like tree bark, so you don't have to worry about it having to have a solid coverage. 
But if you need a third layer, I'll just wait for this to dry and come back to it any time. Roots kind of coming down and tapering on top of this hillside, down the edges. Make it look like it kind of disappeared down into the sand. And then I will do, I think, the final, final, the actually final blow dry. Just, just to be sure that when I get up to do those final swirls, I don't pull any of that dark brown into it. So I'm just doing my final check to make sure that the sides Paper how I want them to thicken up where you need to and I'll be back in a moment after my final blow dry All right, so now for the fun stuff, which is all the decorations that go on top. So this is gonna be the oranges and blues, and then we'll finish everything off with the whites for kind of going around the circles and doing all the highlights in the hillsides and everything like that. So I'm gonna get my smallest brush. We're gonna do a lot of detail work again, um, and that's gonna be your orange and blue. We'll start with the orange just because, and uh, you can put some white in it if you want to, or you can change your colors completely. You can do yellows if you want to as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop up some white, put it near my orange, and if you mix that just by themselves, it turns this more into a creamsicle color. It's a beautiful color all by itself if you want to. I'll put a tiny bit of yellow into it though to bring it back to an orange. So maybe a little bit more white than that. And then just in whatever proportion that you want to, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure there's some water in it. It's not just a thick paint. And if any of our colors come and they're just a little bit thick in the containers because they've been sitting for just a little minute, I know that you guys sometimes don't paint as soon as you get the kits. This is a reminder to make sure that you paint when you get your kits because you gotta make time for yourself, man. You gotta do it. Do the fun stuff. Um, but if you get some paint that's just a little bit thick in there because you waited, just put a little water in there, stir it up, and I'll bring it back. All right, so I've got this color. What I'm gonna do is start just doing circles in random varying sizes. Um, this is our first color, so it doesn't have to feel full, but I'm gonna do little dots and then I'll do big rings that I'm going to eventually put white in. So I'll do a little donuts of those of varying sizes and some of them in front of the tree, some of them in front of the sky wherever you want them. Now, of course, with the original painting, that's what I'm going off of. That'll give you some good idea for where all of these little donuts need to go. Give yourself a little space in between them when you're painting each shape so that when we do the white outline, they don't run into each other too much. So these are just our oranges. I'm gonna follow along with the original one pretty much completely, but if you feel like there's some areas that you want more or less of any of these, you just do you, boo. It is totally chill to change it up. These kind of look like fruit loops. 
All right, so varying sizes, varying distances from each other. Kind of one of the rules for the painting is that the colors all kind of stay around the tree, whereas the white dots will go kind of everywhere. I think it's supposed to be snow, actually. Um, and this is the land of funky trees, so this could be funky snow. When I first painted this painting, it was labeled winter funky tree. So that's one interpretation. So if you think of this as just being snow, or at least the white parts being snow, these could be leaves, could be whatever you want. These could be Christmas lights. Or they're just fun colors. What couldn't use some orange and blue polka dots, right? Okay, so I'm gonna finish up the orange. Just a little bit more, just a couple more. And then I'm gonna do my blue. You can change those colors. You can do some greens if you want to. You can do whatever you'd like for your colors, or how many of these. You can do 10 different colors rather than the two that we'll do. that's all of them. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe off this brush, clean it off completely. I don't necessarily want any of that orange mixing in with my blue when I put that on. So my blue, you can just go into the solid blue by itself. If you want to make it brighter, put a little bit of white. I'm going to go through and do the same thing. Dots just everywhere, dots and donuts. Just trying to make them not super evenly spaced from each other. That's pretty much it. You just wanna make sure there's, they just look like they've been too closely stamped on. Dots and donuts, or Cheerios. And we're still gonna do a bunch of white dots, so it's gonna look a little unfinished with this first step. We've got so much, so much happy white, maybe snow, to put on top. I like to add maybe a little bit of white to the blue when it goes in front of the tree. That white makes it opaque. So that might be where you, it's a good idea to think about brightening up just a little bit. Almost done with this and then we get to the white. All right, so that's the last blue one. I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit for just a second. Those will dry pretty quickly, so I'm just gonna clean out that brush and we're gonna go ahead and do the white details that go on top of the hill first. So I'm gonna rinse that out a couple times, make sure that color is completely out of there. I'm gonna go over to my white, go into the center where we've got some clean white still. And then just a little bit of that white on my brush, I'm gonna go through and put a stripe 
On the top of the hill, I leave a little bit of that dark brown um, above it. I'll put more solid white towards the top of the hill. And then I just leave, again, a little line of brown above. And then I'm gonna do little dots. And if they get too dark, just go ahead and push them out with your finger. It's like putting freckles. Put freckles, you're gonna take your finger and smudge out anything that gets too solid bright for you, whatever you like. I'm gonna do different sizes going down, kind of press them out to make them a little more transparent. It's a little bit softer. Your finger is a great thing to use to make your paint just look a little bit softer. Just smudge it out a bit. I'm just gonna take this down kind of the right-hand side here, just a little ways. And then on the left-hand side, just a stripe going the whole way. This is a good way to make it look like the tree is way more divided now from that hillside. And then just a couple dots here and there if you want them. And then I like to just soften them up a little bit, even put the stamp that's on my finger now on other places on that hill. There you go. And then this one does get a little stripe, leaving that top layer of brown. And they'll be able to go up and do the dots up in the sky. All right, so you can just start, before we get to doing the outlines on these, because we want them to be totally dry, you can just start by doing little bits of outlining on the tree, on any branch that you want to make, just pop a little bit more. You can do little swirls of white around it. If you think of it as snow, it would be any areas that would kind of collect snow, if you want to imagine that. But mostly it just, to me, feels like a little bit of a highlight around little branches that maybe disappear on the back, the dark background, or just anything you just want to kind of do a little bit of a glow around, so. Don't worry about trying to trace out the whole whole tree unless you want to. Just gonna do little bits here and there, just to brighten up, make it pop a little bit, give a little glow factor. Yeah, this helps, it helps that tree pop out if that blue and green got a little bit dark. I like to not have a lot of paint on my brush when I'm doing this so that it's just a little tiny bit gets delivered just looks a little bit more transparent so it doesn't pop off too much. So I have practically no white on my brush. I'm just gonna do a little soft, soft glow on there. And just on a few of the branches, just pick which ones. And then on top of the tree, trunk itself. It's like exactly how we did the hillsides. I'm going to leave a little area of brown and then I'm going to slowly take down the side just kind of a loose line of, um, of white down the edges. And then you can smudge it out with your finger if you want to soften it at all. But I'm just going to take a little bit of highlighting down the sides, just a couple areas, not the whole way. And there we go. So now let's go ahead and add, start adding the polka dots. So pretty much all over, start doing swirls of white, dots of white. Wherever you want, however many you want, just start going crazy. Just make sure that you also go towards the edge of the canvas all the way. And then if you feel like your colors are dry, you can start putting white in the center and then even a ring of white around the edge, like so. Put a glaze on your donuts. And then polka dots of varying sizes with your white wherever you want them. So this is another not so entertaining part of the painting. So I'm not going to show you every single step, but that is the final step, is getting polka dots everywhere. Just make sure you're also putting them in front of your tree as well, just in case this is snow. It would fall everywhere. Make sure they're of various sizes and just put as much as you want on for your painting. Don't forget those rings around your colors, but wait for them to be dry before you do that. Just, just in case it pulls those colors in. 
like so. And that is the last step to the painting. To keep things just a little more entertaining, we're gonna go ahead and tune out now. Just continue that step. Rewind, fast forward, do whatever you need to with this video, you guys. I hope that you were inspired to paint or at least enjoyed seeing some creative stuff today. I had a lot of fun painting this one. This is one of my favorite old paintings we've had for a while, but it's always fun and always new and interesting every time we paint it. Again, I hope you guys also enjoyed your time here. Thanks for spending some of your Saturday afternoon with us. And we hope to see you again at the studio and we hope to see you again at our next live stream. And don't forget, you can get our kits for this one and any other paintings that we have on our catalog at uncorkedcanvas.com. You can see live events as well as at home kits and studio events. Thank you for joining us. We had a wonderful time. We hope you did too. And we will see you next time. Bye bye now. Make sure you like and subscribe so you never miss out on the next big thing from Uncorked Campus.